Yeah, what's up? This your boy, Big Pills. So y'all know I do it. I like to get on there and speak my mind and let y'all know how I feel about certain things. Hope you use it in everyday life. Why well, I want to speak on bitter rappers? Because I've been speaking on a couple, you know, video vlogs about the um, the history of Nashville rap. I want to use this, this, this right here to be motivation to a lot of rappers out there that's trying to make it and feel like they hadn't made it yet. And I'm going to give you a little bit of hope, man. I was once just like y'all, man. I want them rappers that want to be heard. I just want to be a rapper so bad. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I'm talking about, I come out of an era where rapping wasn't even cool. Well, if you was rapping, niggas used to laugh at you and shit. And be like, oh, man, all rapping ass nigga. Now look at it. Everybody, my mom want to rap now. And that's real. And I kind of want to, because I know that city got a big problem with niggas not being to take well or not blowing up or getting the buzz or getting the name and they take that inner hate in their mind and their bodies inside and use it to reflect on other rappers and not the way you do it. Excuse the alarm in the battery chamber, yeah. But yeah, I'm gonna tell y'all this man. Stop being bitter. Stop blaming the rappers and blame the fans. See a lot of y'all out there be trying to make it in rap, you get upset, you start hating the rappers. Cause you feel like, man, why they fuck with that whole ass nigga? I shot niggas, he ain't shot shit. I sell dope, he ain't sold shit. I got money, he ain't got this. You know, you try to compare your everyday life to his rapping skills. But the fans ain't studying none of that. They like the way he sound, the way he's rapping. And a lot of y'all don't get it. So y'all start hating a rapper instead of hating the goddamn people who supporting the rapper. You see what I'm saying? Like, I've been noticing a lot of that. Like, if you're trying to make it and you frustrated, one of my listening to your rap and shit, then you start going off on the rappers and shit, start hating them and shit. I ain't never been that type of dude because I come up from an era where I was once that rapper who couldn't get played, who couldn't be a part of the in crowd. I remember being a young nigga, man. I'm talking about going to concerts and talent shows. I remember one time they had a radio promotion for Coke, you know, to do a freestyle battle. And, uh, and I felt like a lot of rappers back then that was really popping, like Blow Pop Crew, they had drug dealer, you know, Ricky Williams, one of the biggest in the city, you know, uh, backing them. That's where I got my background from, where I feel like they had a drug dealer to back me. That's the only way you go compete in the city because they could afford them big old drum machines and keyboards that costed two and three thousand dollars back then, nine hundred for, you know, certain computers and shit. And you ain't had none of that shit as a young nigga. So drug dealers can buy that shit and watch a D and blow pop crew them. Man, they had all the ropes, chains. We couldn't afford that shit. They had to beat the drum machine, the turntables, the keyboards. They had all that bullshit. So you, you find yourself trying to compete with a little bit of old Casio keyboard that you probably got for Christmas. cost like $20. Man, that shit wasn't good enough. And uh, you know, a drug dealer get behind your motherfucking ass. And it was some real long bread. And Ricky Williams was the one that got behind blow pop crew. Them niggas looking like real rappers back then. Them niggas had the big drum machine, the SP-12s. You know, the SP-1200s. I'm the first time I heard, I heard through Blow Pop Crew. And so my uncle was a drug dealer. So when I won this rap battle, I told my uncle, I was like, hey, kids drive me to the battle. And my uncle Jesse Bud said, yeah, I take it. So I was trying to win just with his Cadillac. You know, they had one of the dopest Cadillacs in the city. Sky blue, two-tone, sky blue and white with the white walls on it, with the, with the 30 bones on that motherfucker, with the rag top on it, with the, with the flying lady, the Rolls Royce lady, the little flying lady on the front. Man, that nigga shit was major. So I just told him to park it in the parking lot, and I stood beside it, because the outside had been, I rapped. But I was terrible. No matter how good his car looked, how much jewelry my uncle stood on, sit there behind me, you know, I love my uncle to death, he's the R.I.P. Jesse Bud. He sat there, let me use his car. He sat there, you know, he was, the first time he would cheer me on, he didn't know I can rap. He was like, you know, his nephew. He was shaking his head like that with a big damn Marines on sitting by the car. But that didn't help me. I was rapping my ass off. I got beat by Seaboy J, Papa J, as y'all know him as. You know, Boogie Brother. He had a strong voice back then. The nigga could rap his ass off. Boogie Bigger Brother, Seaboy J, nigga. And I said, I got to get better. You know, it hurt me. I lost the Coca-Cola Challenge. That was a big thing to me. And I remember just going to, you know, rehearsals where I try to, you know, you had to like qualify to open up for two short or something. 
And a lot of the Nashville assholes come out there. Them niggas had a drum machine, 900, 808s and shit. I ain't had none of that shit. So I got creative. I said, I'm going to grab my little cousin, Charlie. Charlie D, Eagle Man. He on here. Little Charlie, Eagle Man. He about seven years old. And uh, Shay Shay, my little cousin. Little Marcus Fitzgerald, the play for TSU, his mama. My first cousin. I took them two, made them part of my act. I made Shay Shay dance. I ain't make a dance, but I told her to dance for me. And I told uh, Charlotte, you know, to rap for me. Because they was a little bit of dude. I wrote his raps for him. He was seven years old. So they were part of my act. I had to get creative. So I'm telling y'all, don't get mad at rappers when they don't fuck with you because nobody wanted want to let me on back then. I had to get creative. I had to get my family, my little cousin, little Charlie, Eagle Man on here, and uh, Shay Shay. They would get on stage. And Shay Shay would dance, my little act well, I say, go Shay Shay, go Shay Shay, go. And it looked so cute to see a four, five year old little girl just like doing dancing on stage. Everybody it cry to get hype. And Charlie come out rapping with a little voice was squeaking back then. Man, 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 man. But he was rapping as a little boy. Then I come in and see my little lines. So I would use them to try to get a, a gimmick to kind of blow up. So niggas started paying me some attention. So Blow Pop Crew came to me after we performed. And uh, I'll never forget Blow Pop. He want to sign Charlie. He like, nah, I like that little nigga, man. The nigga got like sound like Easy E, man. Nigga sound like Easy E. We want to sign him for that little Easy E kind of voice. And I like, nah, nigga, he been signing. It's my act. It's part of my show. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all better take the best part of my show. Man, don't nigga want to stand me. So what I'm trying to tell you, don't get mad because look where I became. I was never that nigga at the beginning. I was just like you, nigga. You just got to find a way to make what work for you. Bro, Pop Crew, them sitting there like, wanted, you know, and, and it, it kind of fucked with me a little bit. I'm the main act. But they wanted Charlie because he sound like Easy. He had a little squeaky voice. So Charlie said, I'm like, I'm my Jesse Bud's son, you know, my little cousin. So I'm like, how am I just hang out this child? This ain't my child. You know what I'm saying? The y'all niggas on the road. And, you know, I ain't even putting me in y'all hands like that. But I did for the little certain way. Like, damn, they, they were more interested. And my kid cousin than me, I want to be the nigga that fuck with Blow Pop Crew them. I watch the niggas on stage. I want to be a part of Blow Pop Crew them. Never got that acknowledgement. And so as I was sitting there watching the rest of the show, I saw Copycat come on. What's the name of your town? Nashville, Nashville. Now who's going to turn out now, Bubba? Copycat and k &S. And I saw the nigga k &S come up on there with a drum machine, which was Blow Pop Crew drum machine. I didn't know that. Ricky Williams, that dope money. Them nigga had a drum machine so major. Man, Kane hit that motherfucker, the bass hit so hard. I was like, God damn. And then that day, I told myself, I want to work with dude. I give, give with KNS. And I found myself up at KNS house in Skyview. He did my first album, wrote my 6 4. See, KNS don't pay me no attention, nobody. But I had to work hard to get those boys' attention. I started getting out there and just rapping what I rap. I started rapping my life, what I saw. My uncle and them sending drugs. My uncle gave me nine, ten ounces, tell me to sit right here, somebody come up, you give them to him. Back then, you can do that because, you know, with people I knew, they wouldn't kill me or hurt me. I was young. So I just started, I had a, I had a song called 48 Keys in 87 when I didn't even have kilos. I had a song called 88 Keys, 48 Keys, a coat. So niggas always talk bad about me, saying, man, nigga talk about dope too much. Man, he ain't going to make that nigga piss all the guns and dope. Cause all I knew, I'm from Puzzle Taylor Pride, one of the notorious prizes ever, from what known killers come from. So, I just rap what I knew. I couldn't rap that other shit, nigga. I just, you know, and I had family involved in the rap game that still didn't fuck with me, you know. Slugger, he had a group called Technique. And I remember being in high school, you know, before I dropped out, seeing him, the big Dookie Ropes on and shit. And I looked at him, my cousin, you know, he nodded me like, he did me like that, but he ain't. Call me over there and say, this is my little cousin, because I was nobody then. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Even your family members overlook you. I was sitting there telling people, that's my cousin, that's my daddy, uh, nephew, Slugger. I, mean, I, I watched Slugger go through there, but I had to earn my own respect. I did all the shit y'all niggas doing. So when you see other rappers shine, don't get mad. Just figure out a way to get yours. Man, I did that shit, man. I just kept on, kept on, kept on, kept on. And then I got popping. Now, a lot of the rappers I looked at started wanting to rap with me. 
want to be on my project. I started getting a little dope money, started putting my own money behind myself, buying my own jewelry, started rapping and shit. I started looking like the niggas who was bagging them niggas. Niggas started giving me respect. That's pistol. Because that shit made sense when EZ came out. When EZ came out, talking that shit, it made my rap feel like, okay, I'm on the right path. Because before EZ, niggas act like I was saying this shit that I never get a deal, I never get signed. Niggas on that power, black power shit back then, that public enemy. When the little African medallions and shit back then, I wasn't doing that. I don't know nothing about no Africa. I ain't never been there. I knew about that dope, that cocaine. So, yeah. So, that's why I be like that. And that's why I always gave rappers in my city a chance to get on my project because I just want to be heard. So, when I say a rapper, I know exactly how they feel. Ask Boogie. Boogie, one of the greatest a and in the game. He's a rapper, a head of a producer. Boogie brought a lot of rappers to me, brought Young Buck to me. He bought him fresh to me. He bought, man, a bunch of ton of rapper, big loot to me. I gave these niggas chances. If Boogie bought him to him, I told him to get in the booth. Get in the booth. Any nigga know me, got still with me. Get in the booth. Because I know what them niggas feel like. I was them. I always want to be heard. So I make sure every rapper got around me, I gave him his chance because that's all a rapper want. They want to be heard. So when you niggas get y'all chances and get on, man, give a nigga a chance. You never know. They could be the next me. They could be the next you. Somebody had to give me a chance, but I didn't. Anybody give me no chance. I had to earn mine. But sometimes, man, give a rapper a chance. Let them get on something. You don't know what you discover. You might discover a nigga bigger than you. You can sit back and be CEO and live off that nigga rap. And yours might not be. See, y'all didn't want to do that. Y'all sit back and try to keep draining your career until you do something. Why not do nothing? Your caller might be a CEO. You might have a rapper around you that can rap. Let that nigga do the rapping. You sit back and earn money off of it. Stop trying to be the rapper sometime if it ain't working for you. You might be have a calling to be a CEO. And that's why I always gave every album I see, you can hear a bunch of people around, like Young Paper. I gave him a chance. He was a little young nigga. I didn't know that nigga from nobody. He was a school kid. He went to school with my, my little cousin, who Shay Shay, I'll tell you about, who she danced for me. Say, well, my boyfriend, he rapped. I said, let me him. Nigga couldn't even rap good. The nigga said, I bust rhymes like birthday balloons. I started laughing. But I gave him a chance because I saw a young me. He just wanted to be heard. I right. put on every song on the album. None of the day to see the paper. Young Buck, same thing. I always gave niggas a chance because I saw myself inside of them. Nobody gave me a chance. And I earned it. That's the way you should be. Earn it. And the same people you look up to that look down on you will look up to you. Love y'all. Peace.